In 1608, a French guy named Monsieur de Montfort went to China and he came back and he wrote about it and it was translated into English. What he describes in China is that the people there trade in gold and silver and they would accept those for the stuff they exported to Europe, like cabinets, silk, gold, cloth, and other rarities. And the Europeans sent so much silver to China that the ratio went from two silver to one gold gold in 1608, all the way up to 11 or 12 silver to one gold by the time of this next author who's writing in the London Intelligencer in 1762. He describes the ratio as going from 11 silver to one gold up to 12 silver to one gold, again on account of the influx of silver from Europeans in exchange for Chinese exports. Now in 1762, the same author tells us that the ratio prevailing in Europe and England is 14.6 silver to one gold. And the number that we hear a lot about the historic ratio is 16 to one. That's closer to what we were coining the money at in our country at the very beginning. But I don't think that justifies calling 16 to one the quote historic average. And as we all know today, that ratio has gone way above even 60 silver to one gold where it was recently. Although the number's been dropping in the last couple months and we're now sitting at around 51 silver to one gold, perhaps on the way down. And so, especially with the additional 250 years of hindsight, we can agree with this London author from 1762 who says the government should make sure the silver and gold coins do have a uniform purity and weight. However, it should not be trying to fix a ratio between the two that's supposed to hold into perpetuity. Gold and silver don't have a fixed ratio. There isn't a historic ratio. It depends on who's finding what, what they're doing with it, and history has proven that that can change a lot. 